What's good, Crown family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope this video bring a little light to your day. Make sure you smash the subscribe, hit that like button, and also hit that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Also, after this video, be sure to check out my newest song. It's called 2020. I'm going to leave the link in the pinned comment. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to check out Crook's Corner, exclusive interview with the one and only Eminem. Now, listen, I'm going to break this video down into pieces because this is an hour-long video. So, hey, let's get straight to it, though. When the album first came out, Music To Be Murdered By, and I was like, like, sometimes I like to trip off people's reactions and shit. And I didn't get the Young M.A. line when she was like, you can leave this earth, bitch, I'm in rake mode. I'm like, what? why is everybody tripping this? Leave this earth, rake mode. Ooh. And it just flew Hey, man, see, listen. And and people was in the comments, they were trying to tell me that Young M.A. shouldn't have been on that record. Like, I definitely feel like she held her own on that record. She just got a, a different style that people, you know, not really used to. But she be killing it, bro. Damn, I didn't even get that shit. Mm -hmm. And, like, you reverse on I Will. Um, When you said that, I, I, I got the John Will, because who I'm in the booth, like, hey, bro. I go ham for dead presidents. I got the ham for a bruh. Ooh, and goddamn. I got the a bruh. Uh. I didn't get a bruh. Like, hey, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I missed that. And I was like, fuck, how did I miss that? Goddamn. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens. Like, that Ohio scheme you did, that shit was oh. crazy. And it took me like two listens to get the Cincinnati. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Line. I was like, wait a minute. Listen, since an Addy. Yeah. Oh mm. shit. It's the shortest thing for a dress. Yeah, I saw I saw some people got that and I was like kinda of, cause sometimes I don't know if you ever be sitting around writing some shit and you're like, man, nobody's gonna get this shit. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, well let me just try it and see right. if anybody does. Like right. but that's that's the like that's kind of the beauty of wordplay. Right. It's like sometimes people ain't gonna get it the first listen. They'll get it the mm -hmm. second, third, fourth, fifth listen. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a lot of listens for the new one that you just dropped. Um, music to be the line. It's so many lines in there. So many. Man, listen. Now it's 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 one like listen. It's one channel that I know get like gets it. Shouts out the script work, man. Script works. Bro, they break down bars like no other, bro. I'm talking about the way they explain it. Man, they just get it, bro. I be like, damn, bro. I I legit, like, after I do a reaction, like, I'll go watch their channel and, and just listen to them because they be just explaining things that I didn't miss. I be like, damn, bro. Then, hey, man, shout out to Squidward, bro. For real. What's up, y'all? It's your man, King Crooked. I'm live in Dr. Dre's lab right now. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, they in Dre studio? And, um, I could spend the whole episode giving, you know, props to the man across the room from me. You know, his achievements are just incredible. You know what I mean? Um, what, what are you doing, Marshall? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you talking about me? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got the homie in the house, one of the greatest of all times, Marshall Mathis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, bro. I Absolutely. really appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah, I'm so time, humble, man. man. Let's jump into it, man. Let's talk about music to be murdered by. It's um inspired by the 1958 release from Alfred Hitchcock with the same title. What made you do that? Well, it was actually Dre had the sample like years ago, right? And he made a beat to it, and one day it just popped in my head. I can't remember why. So I hit him and I was like, "Yo, what did what ever happened to that beat?" And he was like, "Oh, it's still around." So, but the beat was, the beat was different. I just updated a little bit with some drums and shit, right? right? But, like, that was, it was based off that, that I started thinking, like, yo, that whole concept is crazy. Like, music to be murdered by, like, I wonder if I could play off this whole Alfred Hitchcock thing. And, and then Dre started. That's so crazy, man. Because it's just like a lot of music is inspired by it things we're around or things we see, things we hear. And, and just hearing Eminem, you know, say that, it only confirms the way I make music. Also, like, I could be having a conversation with somebody and they say something, I'd be like, damn, that sounds like something that could be put into a song. Like, yo, that's crazy, bro. With ideas. It's like, yo, you need to listen to this album that he has. 
So he sent me the link to that. And I started listening and I was like, yo, I could I could base this whole album off off that. I love concept. There album, was actually bro. some stuff that didn't make it on there that I was trying to get on there, but we couldn't really work it out with the sample clearing. Mm -hmm. But I had it even more intertwined than it was. And we right. had to, you know, pick and choose the, the best pieces to put on there just for sampling issues and shit. But uh bro. I mean, I, I definitely understand, you know, the ownership of the artists who make the original music and, and other artists wanting to sample their music. You know, they got to be careful with who they give their music to. But it, it just, it sucks sometimes because a lot of dope music don't get put out due to sample clearing, bro. Samples. Facts. Yeah, right. <laughs> when I was stuck in traffic for like three hours listening to it over and over and over. And I caught something new every single time. And it's like, this is going to take, you know, to about 2021 or some shit for everybody to really get all of them. <laughs> talk about avid fans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you write in that type of, on that level, you know, like you said, you said you just put it in anyway, even knowing that it, it could slip by people's radar. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like, you know, um, there's a certain, there's a certain kind of fan that will get that, and there's a certain kind of fan that might just be the average listener who doesn't, you know they like hip hop, and it and it sounds good. Something sounds good to them, mm -hmm. right? But they might not understand exactly what we're doing. How dope it is! Yeah, <laughs> but well, but but that's what's dope about those reaction videos, and also the the people who break down the lyrics and they mm -hmm. show you like, okay, he was hitting these syllable schemes right here. Mm. Every single syllable. Bro, that is script work, bro. I know for a fact he gotta be talking about script work because the way they break down bars is insane, bro. If you haven't checked out the channel, go check them out, man. Look them up. They be killing it, bro. Five syllables there mm -hmm. or seven. Right. And he was hitting these right here. Mm. And he started a new syllable scheme, rhymed with that syllable scheme, and then came back at the end and rhymed with the first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that that helps people like really- To understand the genius. Yeah, to understand. Zoning off of one joint, stopping the limo, limo, hopping the window, <laughs> shopping the demo, demo at gunpoint. gunpoint. Yeah. The outer rhymes are two syllables. The inner rhymes are five syllables. Yeah. That's, in my opinion, what makes you one of the greatest <clears throat> of all time. Yeah, but that's, to me, my opinion back to you because when we did the, what the fuck was it? My house. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is me and Royce joke about this shit all the time. We're like, fuck, Crooks gonna be on the song. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yo. <laughs> but uh, facts. But we joke about that shit all the time because it's like, uh, you and him, to me, make verses that, even if you laid them first, they're untoppable. Mm -hmm. So it's like. I can only hope to tie mm. at best. That's a big, when that's a did, big yo, compliment from you, dog. But bro, when you did the, in my house, the lights out, the utilities in the facility, the life out, the wipe out, I forgot the next mm -hmm. scene, but it, utilities in the, like you was rhyming all that. Right, Like Crazy. that shit was like, and, the, and, and, and being able to keep it going, like that's what I think a lot of, a lot of the average listener sometimes might not. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because it's just like, as an artist, when you do a song with someone that you know that's really going to go in, it brings another side out of you. Like, it really pushes your pen because you like, bro, I ain't trying to be bodied on the track by him. I mean, I'm, I know my verse may not be as good as he'll, but listen, I'm finna go as hard as I can so nobody be like, damn, man, somebody, bro just bodied you on this track. Like, I, I know exactly how that feels, man. I know exactly I how that feels. The, 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 you know, because some people don't catch the syllables. They think that we're, you know, rhyming, you know, my house, the lights out, utilities mm -hmm. in the facility, like house rhymes and out rhymes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're not catching the full scheme. Yeah. Yeah. They're not catching the my house, lights out, da -da 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 the lights out, wife out. Like there's two there, and then there's utilities in the facility. Yeah. Same thing. It's like. That's the that's the beauty to me of the craft of emceeing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, is that that's important to you? Hell yeah, bro. For, just from hearing like just the first seven minutes, it's like I feel like Eminem should be like a professor and like just teach hip hop, bro. Cause he he's passionate about hip hop, bro. I, I like I, just seeing it. 
the way he talks about it, he loves music with a passion. You can see it, bro. Yeah, because it's it's, and I know it's important to you because it's what makes rap fun, right? Right. So sometimes we might not, we might not have a, we might we might be in the mood to like not even, not uh, to write a song that might not have a message to it, right. might not really be saying anything that's important, right. right? But it's more about the craft, and we're just trying to go as yeah. hard mm -hmm. as we can go. Facts. You know. And Facts. <clears throat> I think that that to me is what makes it fun. Right. Is being able to you you know when you thought of the, hey bro, I go ham for dead presidents. Like, you feel something. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you think of that, you're like, yeah. oh shit. Like, oh shit, that's kind of yeah. ill. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, bro. Let me figure this out. Let me yeah. sit down with this scheme and figure it out. But that's that's to me, man, is the beauty of uh of this culture. I guess. How did the um, Young and May collab come about? I was very surprised to hear. Her on there. I ain't gonna lie, I was surprised myself. Yeah. All around. How'd that come about? Well, when she put out uh Ooh, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, she's dope. And I kinda started following her a little bit. And then it was like um I started watching every video she put out. Word. And I was more so like intrigued by her persona. Like right. how how like she just she carries a star. herself like a star, right? Facts. Like she's just like charisma right right but she also had the bars and i was like man like this is like like she's really got bars like i was so then i i just went down the wormhole of like the eat freestyle she did right mm. then she did Flex, come on and how she was just calm murdering it on flex yeah, right exactly. but she barely even Broke raised her voice <laughs> yeah <laughs> like she was just calmly killing it i was like oh my god she's so I just reached out. I was like, "Yo, I want to, I, I want to put her on an album, man. Like, I want to do something with her." And that's dope, man. Hit her up, and I was like, "Yo, I want." I said, "I got this intro to the album, and then I want you to be the first thing that people hear." See, man, that right there. Like the fact that you know it wasn't on. Okay, this artist is buzzing. Let me put her on the song. Let me go get Drake and some of the hottest rappers. He's gonna do music with people that. He enjoy listening to her or see someone that he's like, damn, they're dope. I want to collab with them. I'm, I'm exactly like that because if it doesn't make sense, why put them on a song? I mean, I get it. You know, the techniques, you know, with the algorithm, you get a hot artist on a song, you know, it'll do numbers. But my thing is, if you don't sound right on a song, I'm not going to put you on a song. Like, if I go and collab with an artist, I'll make sure, you know, they're going to sound right on this song. They're going to fit this song. They're going to be able to deliver but he's speaking facts right now, bro. After that, you know what I'm saying? Like, gave it an alley oop. Yeah, crazy. She just, yeah, she just went in and she murdered it. Is, is that what you do? You go down a rabbit hole with different artists when you when you start liking them and you go down a wormhole, kind of. I know I do because I usually spend. I mean, this has been this way for a while. I usually spend like an entire Saturday, mm. if if I'm not at work, if I'm not at studio. I spend like an entire Saturday going through everything that's out. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. Like checking out everything. Wow, y'all hear that? So, On Saturday, so y'all better bring y'all best shit. And never know who listening. You know what I'm saying? Facts, For bro. Real, man. You legit. I don't mean to stop it so much, but you legit never know who's watching, who's listening to your music, bro. Like they're watching, bro. You just keep pushing, man. If you out there chasing a dream, like just keep pushing, bro. Because I promise you, bro. Some of the biggest people in the world be watching, you know, up and coming, you know, artists of on all type of levels. No matter what you do, they're watching, bro. If you're good at what you do, you know, that's, people gonna find you, no matter what, bro. And um, Black Thought, like I feel like you guys finally gave us what we wanted—a collab. You know what I'm saying? Um, how the hell did that happen? Well, I had been wanting to do something with him, and. I just never found the album or the song that I felt like would be mm -hmm. good to get him on. That right. was worth, you know what I'm saying? Like this might be right up his lane. Denon made the beat. Exactly what right? I do. So Royce put a verse on it and then Q-Tip had the hook. Mm. And when I heard the hook, I was like, my era, my era. And I was like, me and him are kind of from the same era. You mm. know what I'm saying? So this might work. Right. So. I just hit him up through Royce, asked Royce if he could send him the track. Right. And, and it just, y'all made magic. Yeah, Y'all made magic. That was a collab that 
hip hop has been waiting on for a long Yo, time. His, his fucking funk flex freestyle was just like, Psh. oh my god. That man went in for ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> fucking crazy. I can see fuck flex, bro. I but gotta go watch that. We love about this music, right? Is because especially as a competitive rapper, mm -hmm. right? We rap to be, we're competitive rappers, right? right? We're not just, like, we're in it, we do this. This is what we do. And it's, like, inspiring to hear that shit, but it also, like, kind of gets you, like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, gives you anxiety, right? <laughs> right? But it's, like, but at the same time, you kind of get pumped up about it and be, like, oh, shit. Every time something new comes out like that, you're always like, like my mindset is like, yo, I gotta try to top that. Literally. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then you go do it. Um, first of all, congratulations, man. Ten number ones on Billboard 200. That's oh, incredible. That's insane, you know bro. I, I gotta put goals. That there, man. I, I like. Um, how does that feel though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever imagine that you have ten number ones ever, ever, ever in the history of my life, like? I could never like imagine like like for me what's 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 crazier about it that to me is like being able to meet my childhood idols being able to sit down with LL Cool J right my favorite rappers of all time ever when I had when yeah, I made the, the relapse album right he sat in the car in the truck and we drove around and he listened to the whole album. Mm. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, I don't I don't even know what to say. Cause I don't want to play myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't wanna like, but before we before we got out the truck, I was like, yo, man, I just wanna say like, um, like what you mean to me, man. Like, and I was trying to like not make it come off staffy, but I was just like, <laughs> yo, man, I like I I'm I'm a stand of you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, but but he a real one for doing that because a lot of times, I'm not going to lie, it kind of feels weird, you know, kind of, you know, showing that side of yourself, showing that you're so much of a fan when you meet those artists because I've come in contact with, you know, a few of my favorite artists, but it's just like, you also don't want to be that person to be like, you know, not give them their flowers while they're here and, and be like, dang, I regret not telling them how much I love their music and, and, and show them love. But it's dope that he does that right up front, bro. Just to sit there and be like, all right, 15, 16 year old Marshall thinking that that could actually happen one day. Mm -hmm. And right. I'm going to be sitting in the car. LL's going to be sitting around the, in the car with me and, and he's listening to my album. Wow. Fuck out of here. Wow. <laughs> like that to me, like meeting Dre was just like, holy shit. Is that what kind of keeps you grounded, like your love for the culture? I mean, is that like, you know, after a huge amount of success, you know, it would be easy for you to be a different type of person. You know what I'm saying? Like, what keeps you grounded? I just think, I mean, I am so, I'm so in love with this art form, right? And I'm so passionate about it because it's really the only thing that I ever was good at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like aside from basketball, I'm amazing at that. But that's the whole <laughs> talk your talk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, nah, it just you know I I I just love it. I I love I love to watch like, you know. Like the YBN core days come up, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh shit, he's gonna be the next. You know what I'm saying? Like facts. It's the same shit. Why? When I listen to one of your songs, I don't really want to because it gets like I get anxiety, but I have to. <laughs> I mean, I, I not that I don't want to, but yeah, man, I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> yo, it's nerve. It's fucking nerve wracking every time you and Royce, you know, and I think because, of, you know, we're also in this circle together, kind of. And it's like, uh, but it's like, like. Y'all are the rappers. You and him are the rappers that I, that I get anxiety being on a song with. Because I'm like, man, I got to fucking, I got to push the pen. Rappers Facts. Like tech now. Facts. I'm going I'm to uh, leave it off on this uh, this time stop, and I'm going to come back tomorrow and finish up the rest of the interview. This is a really good interview. I always thought the idea of artists interviewing artists was a really dope idea because it's it just like, 
the artist understands the other artists because they, you know, been through that. You know, they done that, so they understand the questions to ask. They know what not to ask. They know how to get the other artists to talk. So this is a really dope thing. Shouts out to uh, Crook's Corner. I'm, I'm definitely going to finish up uh, this full interview. Y'all stay tuned. By now, um, like I said, this is a really good interview, so let me leave off on this note. Uh, I appreciate y'all for coming through. It should be a video on my face right now. That's my newest song. It's called 2020. I just got to click the video on my face to take you to the song. Now, if you enjoy that song, smash that subscribe to my music channel, which is a separate channel from this. I use the time to click the video on my face. And we out. Salute, Crown Family. Be blessed. Till next time, y'all stay safe out there, man.